This is the statement of probable cause. On May 25, 2020, someone called 911 reported that a man bought merchandise from Cup Foods at 3759 Chicago Ave in Minneapolis, Hennepin County, Minnesota, with a counterfeit $20 bill. At 8.08 .08 p.m., Minneapolis Police Department officers Thomas Lane, J.A. Coon, arrived in their body-worn cameras and activated and running. The officers learned from the store personnel that the man who passed the counterfeit 20 was parked in a car around the corner from the store on 38th Street. BWC video obtained by the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension shows that the officers approached the car, Lane on the driver's side and Kuhn on Kung, I'm not really sure what his name is, so we'll just call him Officer K, on the passenger side. Three people were in the car. George Floyd was in the driver's seat, a known adult male in the passenger seat, and a known adult female was in the back seat. As Officer Lane began speaking with Mr. Floyd, he pulled his gun out and pointed it at Mr. Floyd's open window and directed Mr. Floyd to show his hands. When Mr. Floyd put his hands on the steering wheel, Lane put the gun back in its holster. While Officer K was speaking with the front seat passenger, Officer Lane ordered Mr. Floyd out of the car. He, he ordered him to put his hands on, out of the car, put his hands on Mr. Floyd and pulled him out of the car. Officer Lane handcuffed Mr. Floyd. Mr. Floyd actively resisted being handcuffed. I did not see that. You can look at the other video on this channel. I did not see him resisting. He was just a very large man. Once handcuffed, Mr. Floyd became compliant and walked with Officer Lane to the sidewalk, sat on the ground at Officer Lane's direction. In a conversation that lasted just under two minutes, Officer Lane asked Mr. Floyd for his name and identification. Officer Lane asked Mr. Floyd if he was on anything and explained that he was arresting Mr. Lloyd for passing counterfeit currency. Officer Kay and Lane stood Mr. Floyd up and attempt attempted to walk Mr. Floyd to their squad car at 8.14 p.m. Mr. Floyd stiffened up, fell to the ground, and told officers he was claustrophobic. MPD officers Derek Chauvin, the defendant, and Officer Tao then arrived in separate squad cars. The officers made several attempts to get Mr. Floyd into the back seat of squad 320 from the driver's side. Mr. Floyd did not voluntarily get into the car and struggle with the officers by intentionally falling down, saying he could not go into the car and refusing to stand still. Mr. Floyd is over six feet tall and weighs more than 200 pounds. While standing outside of the car, Mr. Floyd began saying and repeating that he could not breathe. The defendant went to ask, went to the passenger side and tried to get Mr. Floyd into the car from that side, and Lane and Officer K assisted. The defendant pulled Mr. Floyd out of the passenger side of the squad car at 819, and Mr. Floyd went to the ground face down and still handcuffed. K told Mr. Floyd, held Mr. Floyd back, and Lane held his legs. The defendant placed his left knee in the area of Mr. Floyd's head and neck. Mr. Floyd said, I can't breathe multiple times and repeatedly said, Mama, and please as well. The defendant and the other two officers stayed their positions. The officer said, you are talking fine to Mr. Floyd as he continued to move back and forth. Lane asked, should we roll him on his side? The defendant said, no, staying put where we got him. Officer Lane said, I am worried about the excited delirium or whatever. The defendant said, that's why we have him on his stomach. None of the three officers moved from their positions. BWC video shows Mr. Floyd continued to move and breathe. At 8.24, Mr. Floyd stopped moving. At 8.25, the video appears to show Mr. Floyd ceasing to breathe or speak. Lane said, want to roll him to his side. K checked Mr. Floyd's right waist for a pulse. I could not find one. None of the officers moved from their position. At 8.27, the defendant removed his knee from Mr. Floyd's neck. An ambulance and emergency medical personnel arrived. The officers placed Mr. Floyd on a gurney and the ambulance left the scene. Mr. Floyd was pronounced dead at Henpin County Medical Center. The 
Penn Penn Med County Medical Examiner conducted Mr. Floyd's autopsy on May 26. The full report of the ME is pending, but the ME has made the following preliminary findings. The autopsy revealed no physical findings that support a diagnosis of traumatic asphyxia or strangulation. Mr. Floyd had underlying health conditions, including coronary artery disease and hypertensive heart disease. The combined effects of Mr. Floyd being restrained by the police, his underlying health conditions, and any potential intoxicants in his system likely contributed to his death. The defendant had his knee on Mr. Floyd's neck for 8 minutes and 46 seconds total. 2 minutes and 53 seconds of this was after Mr. Floyd was non-responsive. Police are trained that this type of restraint with a subject in a prone position is inherently dangerous. This defendant is now in custody. They are doing an ongoing investigation into the other three officers. In the meanwhile, it's been three days of nonstop uh, protesting and um, the chief of police has discussed that um, people from outside of uh, that immediate area seem to be coming in and I'm sure some people are of their own free will and there are a lot of rumors that there are paid protesters. Uh, I've been looking into that and I'm making a video on it. Uh, it doesn't lessen anything. It doesn't make this any different. Um, the bottom line, whether these are paid protesters to incite a riot, to incite violence, to uh, make the narrative look one way or another, is not the point of this. Um, he is not the twin brother of an ex-NBA player. Um, I don't know where these rumors are coming from. An NBA player did state that he was like a brother to him, not that that was his twin brother. Uh, I've had people tell me that pressure on the neck is not going to kill you. Probably not that alone of a healthy person, probably not. But a man in a very scary situation where police do kill people um, and you already have underlying health conditions, um, it's fully, <laughs> possible that that happens and in this case it did happen um, much like most of these cases I absolutely believe in conspiracy theories I absolutely believe in false flags agendas um, I think our government is inherently evil so I believe all of those things happen in this case I do not believe that I believe mr. Floyd was a real person and mr. Floyd died at the hands of the police that's just my personal opinion um, I've been sent so many videos about false flags and that the EMTs were wearing bulletproof vests. Uh, it just takes a simple search of Hen Pen County EMS and you can see that typically, yes, they do wear these things that look like a bulletproof vest. Um, there are a lot of conspiracies that are real. There absolutely are. Um, I'm really frustrated uh, that's why I haven't been on yesterday today um, just watching this happen um, I don't want to come off in an angry manner at anybody but I have very strong convictions about this type of thing um, so I've really tried hard to just shut my mouth and report only on what I believe to be true. Maybe tomorrow we'll be able to have a conversation. Right now, I do not have the patience to do that. So, uh, as soon as they arrest, and they should, the other three officers uh, will be back with another update. I am doing a video on the paid protesters because I do believe that they are paid protesters. I do believe they want to see civil unrest in this country. Um, I don't believe that they give one shit about Mr. Floyd at all. Um, I don't think that they care about any of us at the end of the day. And uh, if they can get the eyes off of COVID, then that's exactly what they're going to do. And I think that they did pay people to go in 
it wouldn't be the first time that's for damn sure so that video will be coming it'll probably be done tonight i'm not really sure and that's it